Hey guys, my name is System, and this is Valheim. Hope everyone is well, have a amazing day. I myself, really good one, really good day. And uh, today we're gonna do a little tutorial video on terraforming. So I get a lot of questions about terraforming. It is a little quirky in the world of Valheim. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, teach you how to level out your land, make walls, uh, dig trenches, and uh, interact with the world in general using the hoe and the pick. So that is what we're gonna do. But before we get into that, if you end up finding this video useful, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you find it really useful, go ahead and hit subscribe. It is always appreciated and uh, helps the channel. So let's go ahead and uh, get right back into it. And yeah, get to the uh, tutorial. So the first terraforming tool you get access to is going to be the hoe followed by the pick. So they're your kind of two main ones with the cultivator being a little bit, I guess, but not really much. But we will cover that at some point. But the hoe, the hoe is going to be the first one. If you actually make this thing, uh, you can also operate it up to level three, I believe. Once it's level three, it's at max durability and it'll just last longer. It's all it really does for you. But basically, if you have it in your hand, you'll see here it has a little circle. And uh, it may not have the circle actually where you're looking. If you're looking at land that is either below it or at the same level, you'll be able to see the circle. If the land is actually over it, you won't be able to see the circle. It's basically the way the, the actual circle works. But if I come over here where we can see the circle, so all the land here is either at the same level or slightly under it. And I can kind of click there, change the land a little bit. You can see the land is actually changing a little bit. If I go over here, it changes a little more, so on and so forth. So basically when you're starting to level out land, one of the best things to do is figure out where your feet are. Because the way this thing kind of works is it is determining where to level land based on your positioning. So my position in the world directly determines exactly what level it's trying to relate, uh, I guess, raise and lower all the land to. So as I kind of move around here, it's going to level out all the land kind of in a radius around me. And you'll use a lot of stamina doing this, but uh, it is just uh, paying the price. And you have to do it. It's part of the game. And yeah, you won't have as much stamina as I do early in the game. But basically when you're trying to level out a good area, right, for building, you kind of want to do it like that. A radius around you, then you kind of move forward a little bit, then you level out that, then do it again, repeat more and more. The more you actually click, you'll get the little kind of valleys and the little hills that you'll come into, and you'll be able to get rid of most of them just by the leveling land without costing you any resources of actually having to raise the land because actually start spending stone at that point. So you want to get it as level as possible just using the, the uh, hoe and the leveling ground function uh, by doing it like, a, you know, in a circle, right? Just all around your feet. So your feet kind of always stay at the same level. When you get on a higher piece of land, you have a line in the little center of the circle, right? So that little line is telling me where the hoe is going to try to level the land up to because the circle now is way above uh, in height relative to my feet uh, to that piece of land down there. So if I click now, it's actually trying to raise that land up, right? So raise it up to that point, at least as much as it can. Sometimes you got to raise it around there a little bit. So be able to bring it all up because as a stability system where the dirt kind of slides down, there you go. That land is relative to my feet now and everything is up there. So that's kind of how the level ground works and uh, how this little line works. It really tells you exactly where it's trying to raise it up to. Now there's another function of it. If you actually hit the shift key, right? You notice that the line went away and instead of being relative to my feet now, it's being relative to my cursor. So it's actually trying to level out the land relative to the cursor. So it's looking at that center point going, that's the target height and everything around there, it'll try to level it out to. And uh, that's kind of how that works. And that one is actually really good for like building slopes. So you can kind of hold shift here, get it in the right position, you know what I mean? And to do that, to maybe go up a little higher if this was a higher slope, right? And to kind of build your slope up and even out nice. So you can kind of set it at each level and make it not ignore, I guess, ignore your feet and try to get your you know, feet constantly in the right spot, just trying to get it up to a nice slope. So that is what that function is for. And okay, the next thing we're gonna cover here is kind of creating walls in Valheim and how to do it efficiently and cheaply. So as cheaply as possible, right? So I have these walls here. I have these little pillars at least. And I went ahead, I pretty much just did this. I'll just do another one right here. Let's go ahead and just uh, start jumping. Every time you tap, it actually costs four stone. So if you have freight walls this way, it gets really expensive, really quick. You can see here, have to kind of just jump and jump and jump, or you can stand on top of it and just keep doing it as well. But you seem to get a little more height when you do it this way. It also uses a ton of stamina. And uh, yeah, it isn't very, very much of a good time at all. You will literally burn through stone insanely. Now you'll see here, I actually can't get it any higher than this point. This is actually the max that's going to let me actually get this pillar up. Because the way the max height works in this game is a little strange. It's not like Minecraft 
where you have like 250 blocks. It's actually relative to the world's generation when it initially generated. So it doesn't matter what I do, I'll never be able to make a wall taller than this. Now you can see one off in the distance, it's actually higher than this one, right? That's because the base land, right, where it initially generated is higher than it is here. So no matter what, I'll be able to, you know, get that one up to a higher level. And as I go up the hill, it'll get higher and higher and higher relative to the initial position of the actual ground when you started. Now, when you dig down, it's kind of the same way. You'll dig down until you hit something. It's kind of like bedrock in Minecraft. You just can't dig through it, but you can only go so far down. And that's relative to the spawn position of the initial generated land as well. So that's kind of how that works. So it's a little weird system. Thought it was a little strange. Thought it was worth explaining. Also, if you want to do this efficiently, so we have this little wall here now. No, we have this a little section. It's not very pretty because I made this other one here. But if you want to go ahead and do this, I guess, cheaply, decide how high you want your wall, right? So I have our, our, our wall at the height that I want. Then you would go ahead and grab your hoe now. And then go ahead and grab raise ground. And the best way I found to do it is kind of like this. Kind of aim at the top of it. Go right to the edge. Go out as far as you can. Then clip. And you see there... We just got a massive section and that only cost us four stone. This is hands down the cheapest way to do this and probably the most efficient way. There is another way to do it too. I'm just gonna jump up, fly up here because I am being creative. There you go. You can kind of do it like this too, but it's a little wonky when you do it like this. So I'll kind of kind of get it close enough to the edge. There you go. And sometimes it'd be like, yeah, it does weird stuff. The ground's going up here too. So it's a little weird. The other way seems to keep it a much more level when you do it from the ground down tries to aim towards the actual level but you can do it that way but i find you don't get as much kind of range with it where if i do it like here it seems like i get bigger chunks so this is the way i typically do it and if you're actually pretty careful with it right kind of keep your cursor in the center you can actually make them really straight too so you can see this wall is actually really straight now you don't have to make your walls this big i mean you can make it any height but it'll actually greatly release uh release no reduce how much stone it costs you to make a wall and uh, is much more effective and much more time efficient than if you did it otherwise. So this is hands down the best way to actually make walls. And yeah, you definitely want this in your life if you're gonna put a wall around your base. And okay, the next thing we're gonna cover here is gonna be, I guess, trenches and basements because they kind of follow the same rules. So we'll kind of just get them kind of both knocked out at the same time. But you notice here, I dug a little trench. So I dug straight down, straight down until I hit water, then just kind of dug board and got myself a nice kind of straight tunnel. It actually looks pretty good. Pretty smooth, pretty awesome, but it has a couple limitations here and I just want to explain it. So the first one here is the water. That water I did not put in there is completely determined by the uh, level of the water of the ocean, right? So the ocean is persistent throughout the world. It's at a set height and uh, no matter what you do, if you're at a level where you can dig down far enough and actually hit the water level, you're going to fill up your, uh, I guess, your trench or your basement for that matter, which is why the basement's better with water. So when you're initially wanting to plan out your base, right? And you know you're going to want a trench in the end. You're going to want to have it at a little, I guess, a little higher level. Because otherwise, it might only end up having, I guess, a little kind of stream beside your base. As opposed to an uh, actual trench. So you want to build it a little more up on the hill if you want a trench. Also, if you want a basement, you probably want to go way up higher on the hill, right? So way up higher, have a good height up there. So you can actually dig down without having your basement just full of water because otherwise you're just going to get your feet wet all the time and there's no way to remove it. You cannot remove this water and it's just persistent to the world, like I said, and just part of generation. Now you can see here, it's actually pretty smooth. It does have this little jaggy bit at the end. I should probably fix that. Let's go here. Sweet, let's get rid of that. And you can dig this really straight, right? So if I want to dig this straight, you kind of want to max range it. You want to be close enough to the wall where you can still hit it, but far enough away so you can just barely hit like kind of the center of it. You see there, just kind of dug forward. I think I was a little too far away there, but if I go a little closer, there we go. We got a nice jump. It will kind of go up and down a little bit as you go, but you can kind of come back and sort that out later. But you can keep this really straight. So you can make nice, really straight trenches. You can also make them really janky if you want to. But if you aim center, it'll keep it straight. And uh, that is kind of visually pleasing, right? Which I like anyway. And then you can come back later, because right now it's not very deep, right? I have it a little deeper, I think, down here. Does my tool go away? Because that's pretty much what you're limited by. Nope, we're good there. We could actually come like right here, I suppose. Knock that down. There you go. And there you have a little deeper trench, right? And then you go ahead and do it again. It is kind of time consuming and it is painstaking, but at least it's good. It's consistent. It works well and it looks good, man. It's just, uh, it looks awesome. 
yeah, really awesome, really good. You gotta be careful too. If you're really close to the wall, this is part of the reason why you backed away. It'll actually start digging down or sometimes digging up. It's a little weird how the stability system works in this game. So if I aim a little higher, you notice I kind of build up. If I kind of dig down a little bit, probably start taking us down again. Yeah, it's kind of like that there. It's kind of wonky. So you want to kind of have it at that max range, at kind of like eye level height, and you should dig pretty straight. So that is kind of how the trenches and the basements work. The only difference with the basements, I guess, is you're going to cover it with wood later on, right? Just so you have that and maybe a staircase down here, and then you got a trench, and then you can just let it out, dig it out all you need, right? But it is going to take a little bit of work. And okay, one of the hardest things to do in this game is kind of work around water and build yourselves little docks, right? So a lot of people want to build docks. They're all spiffy. They're nice. I built one in my Let's Play. And doing the water alone took me about three hours, just making sure my longship could pull in and out, even during a storm when it's bouncing up and down, and not take damage, because they will. They'll bounce up, they'll hit the ground, they'll take damage, and it's not fun because your ship will just end up destroyed. So anyway, to get this done, you have to go in the water. You have to bring a pick. It's kind of painful because if you go too deep, your pick will get put away on you, kind of like that there. So it's not a good time, right? It's not a good time. It's not It's not fun at all. But anyway, if you keep doing it, we'll do it again. Here you go. And then maybe one more time, then I'll show you how I kind of manage this. So I have it a little deeper, right? So it's a little deeper in that section. Let's kind of see if we can get out here. Go ahead and grab the hoe. Awesome. Now, when you use a hoe in the water, you want to make sure you're holding shift, right? And you want to aim for the deepest point where you picked because it's going to try to level it down to that level and you can see there maybe you can maybe the video it might be hard to see that but the all the land around where i picked is trying to be pulled down to that level just as if we were using a uh, using it over there by the house right same thing same deal and uh it is the easiest way to kind of get it leveled out down there and deep enough to be able to pull in a long ship this is just a carve right so a carve doesn't have as a deep a keel as the long ship so it's going to have a lot less issues. Also, another thing I like to do is build these little poles here that I can walk out on. And then I can go ahead and, uh, again, use my hoe. And I can just work out further, right? Because otherwise, you can't work out this far. And, uh, yeah, it gets really painful really quick. But uh, it's really the only way I know how to kind of work for this. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely the way I do it. If someone else knows the better way, let me know. But I haven't found one. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this tutorial video. If you guys liked this video and found it useful, go ahead and hit the like button. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all to have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.